Alrighty, so we have so far covered, this is page 9 again, we've done method 1 for finding the AT, method 2 for finding the AT, both the first criterion and second criterion, and now we're going to uh, determine the RCP or the respiratory compensation point. So the first thing we need, we're going to do um, this is considered method, method 3. We're going to plot our graphs, method 3a, plot VE versus VCO2. So let's go to our Excel sheet. VE versus VCO2. We're going to go ahead and highlight both of those. And insert, scatter plot. And there we go. Okay, let's make a nice title. So this is uh, VE versus VCO2. Okay. Let's make it a little bit larger. All right, let's go back and now that we have our chart made, see what we need to find. We are looking for VT2 the second ventilatory threshold, uh, the breakpoint in this graph, the nonlinear increase in VE. Okay, so we're looking for the nonlinear increase in VE. We're going to use the same method that we used over here in the first criterion of method two. Okay, so let us go back to our Excel sheet and we're going to use the line function that we did before. Okay, so insert shape line. And let's go ahead and draw a line for the first portion of this here. Looks like right about there. All right, and we'll ignore those two kind of random, or that one kind of random data point there. Uh, but we can assume that it starts to increase quite a bit right here. This is where uh, I think it might be. So we're going to insert another line right about there and we'll start it here and go down to there all right so let's put it right about in the middle and it looks like the rcp is around four point i'm going to say 4.3 or so all right, so let's insert an arrow to indicate that. Bring it down. Uh, 4.3 liters per minute for the RCP. And let's go back to our Word document. And we're going to put that in here. So 4. Point, make sure it takes for some reason. All right, there we go. 4.3 liters of O2. Let's highlight that sucker so that we have it on hand. And we go to method 3B. Okay. Uh, we already have these graphs VE, VO2, and VEVCO2 versus VO2 uh, on one graph. It says plot. PET-O2 and PET-CO2 versus VO2 on one graph. The RCP is the point at which the VEVCO2 begins to increase while the PET-CO2 begins to de uh, decrease simultaneously. So let's go to our graphs over here, which we previously created. I'm just going to get rid of these lines so that we don't get confused here. Okay, so first thing we're going to look for is VEVCO2, uh, where it begins to increase, okay? VEVCO2, let's pull this down just a little bit, is the red. So it decreases here, plateaus right about there, and starts to increase right there. Okay, so let's draw a line where it begins to increase right about there. Okay, now 
we're also looking for where PET CO2 begins to decrease. PET CO2 is the red up here, and we're looking for where it begins to decrease. So we're gonna get another line. And it looks like it starts to decrease right about here. So we're gonna draw a nice line there. And it, it says that where these two things happen simultaneously, okay? So what we wanna do is insert an arrow straight down at the beginning of the increase here and okay we got that so at the beginning of the increase here and the beginning of the decrease here okay so we're going to kind of go right in between there okay so we are going to guesstimate that the RCP using this method is about 4.2. Okay, that's what I'm guessing. Let's go back to our document. And right here we have, oh, it's pretty close actually, 4.2. Uh, and that's liters of O2. Go ahead and highlight that so you don't forget it. And there you have it, that's the hardest part of the lab, finding all these values with the uh, graphs that you will be creating in your Excel sheet, okay? So you have method 2A, we went over, method 2B, uh, method 3, this is for respiratory compensation points, so RCP, uh, we measured at a 4.3 and 4.2, and the... AT we measured at 3.5 and 3.4. So let's go back to our AT equation. Let's see what it predicted at. So AT was predicted at 1.61 liters per minute. So it's quite a bit larger in the estimation that we did. It could be that the person's very fit. could be that we did it... Um, a little bit incorrectly well not really incorrectly but it could be that we eyeballed it just a little bit wrong um, but bottom line is you can compare those two and that's fuel for your discussion so uh, we'll be creating a couple other videos to help you in the rest of the lab until then bye bye